Good afternoon and welcome into Next Weather. I'm meteorologist Nicholas Herboso. A couple big things that we are talking about today. Of course, the heat across the southeastern United States and all eyes on the tropics, especially in the southeast, as we have a disturbance that is near the Caribbean, just north of some of the islands there, that is going to be approaching the Bahamas and eventually the Florida Peninsula. We do have some time before that happens, and we have plenty to look at. There's a little bit of uncertainty in that forecast, but something we'll be talking about today. So let's get right to it. First, we're actually starting with the big picture. We're starting with the upper air look uh, here this afternoon. This is the 500 millibar chart and it kind of gives us a clue as to what is happening in our upper atmosphere, especially in regards to the heat that we are dealing with right now. So you see this big circulation and I'll go ahead and illustrate this as well. You see this big circulation, I've zoomed out here across the United States, across the southern United States, this big bowling ball it looks like. That is a ridge of upper level high pressure. And what that is doing, you can see the circulation here, what that is doing, causing sinking air and under this, there are heat advisories, excessive heat warnings, temperatures in the triple digits, heat index values way into the triple digits, something we're dealing with here. We're kind of on the edge of this thing here. Your, your center of your high pressure system right now is really over this area here that I'm kind of drawing over. However, we are kind of on the edge and it is still giving us some intense heat. If you look over Texas, there's almost no cloud cover it looks like. That's just because there's sinking air, typically under a ridge of high pressure. You do not get cloud cover. You do not get storms. Therefore, that is why it gets a little hot. And that's what they're dealing with there. Temperatures well above average. It looks like this is going to be continuing over the next few days. And this ridge of high pressure that is causing all the heat for millions and millions of people will be migrating off to the west and will be witnessing a very small pattern change. So I'll take this full screen so you can see this here. There is that full view. Now let's switch gears. We're actually going to look at the forecast model. This is with the GFS. There's our heat dome, that ridge of high pressure I was talking about over the United States for tomorrow. And here's Thursday evening now where you see the brighter colors start to migrate to the west. That is that heat dome shifting west. Above average temperatures is expected for a large chunk of the country. We will still be hot, don't get me wrong, but we won't just, we will not be under the main part of the ridge of high pressure. And by Friday and by the weekend, that is more over the western United States, the Rockies, so they will be dealing with plenty of heat. Take a look at this heat advisories. Now, this is only the heat advisories. You see along the Mississippi River here, there's like a blank spot. Those are excessive heat warnings within that. I just don't have those highlighted here. For us locally today, we have a heat advisory that continues until 7 p.m. And understand that within the next few days, I expect more heat advisories each and every afternoon. That's just going to be the deal. And that's typical summertime stuff, except we're a little bit above average in this period. So heat index values 108 to 112 degrees. We have been seeing it. We know that that is happening. So something that we are watching there. I want to go national real quick. Look at the current temperatures across the nation. You can tell exactly where that heat dome is. In fact, if I draw a circle over it, remember what we saw earlier. It's this same area right here that has that heat dome in place. Therefore, you can see the bullseye of those very, very hot temperatures. We're recording this around 2 p.m. here and 95 Oklahoma City, 93 in Kansas City there. So a very, very hot picture for the central and southeastern United States. Heat index even higher, 105 in Oklahoma City, 105 in Kansas City. How about 105 in Little Rock as well, 103 in Mobile. Very, very hot conditions out there. And it looks like it's going to be continuing, especially for the central United States over the next few days here. Looking locally uh, for our forecast tomorrow, heat index. These numbers honestly might be undercutting a little bit. I expect possibly around 110 degrees. And you get the idea. It is going to be hot and continue to be hot over the next few days. Day. So that's kind of the deal with the heat index. Uh, we have extremely humid air mass in place that's helping us get this very uncomfortable air mass in place as well. By the way, quick note, I am on Facebook Live right now. So if you have any comments or questions about the heat or the tropics, be sure to drop those there. And I have it on the side of my screen here so I can actually answer those questions as well. 
Uh, back to what I was saying, 106, 107, you see these numbers, add a few degrees to it. We're ready for the heat. Make sure you're staying cool, staying hydrated. Make sure you are ready for the heat uh, and just try to stay cool the best you can. We have days of this ahead. Uh, long way away from Chris Fall air, even though I know we're getting to the back to school season and people start to get hopeful. We have a long, long, long way to go. Forecast for tomorrow. This is air temperature, not heat index. Uh, chance of a scattered shower or thunderstorm in our area. Mobile 96 degrees for our high. You see 97 in Montgomery, Birmingham, 98 in Jackson. And that bullseye under the heat ridge that I was talking about, 103 in Oklahoma City, 101 in Dallas. So very hot temperatures there. Uh, but of course, we down here are dealing with the humidity the most. Also, I want to mention tonight, it is still going to be extremely warm. 78 degrees in Mobile, 75 in Montgomery, 76 Shreveport, 77 Jackson, 80 in New Orleans. This is maintaining a very hot and muggy feel through our overnight hours. So this poses a little bit of a danger because we're not cooling off overnight. And therefore, I bring in this product. This is the National Weather Service Heat Risk. It's a very good product and it's a detailed product to understand the overall risk, especially for those who may be prone to heat illness. So what does this do? It takes into account a few factors, including how unusual the heat is for this time of year, the duration of the heat, including both daytime and nighttime temperatures, so duration of the event, and those temperatures pose an elevated risk of heat-related impacts based on data from CT CDC, so think heat illness. Any of those purple areas you see, that is not good. So that's our forecast for today. Let's look at tomorrow from the National Weather Service heat risk, and there you go, an extremely uncomfortable picture, lots of areas in that purple. And that's that extreme heat risk category. Once again, we want you to make sure you are staying cool. Over the next few days, the things do not change. In fact, look at Friday, 97 degrees for our high there, extremely hot. Uh, 96 on Saturday and Sunday. Saturday, I do want to note locally for our forecast that we do have a slightly higher chance of rain. That could lead to some hope for us for a cooling shower. I know a lot of us have, or some of us have already seen showers today, so just kind of keep that in the back of your head there. If you have to keep an eye on those showers, we always recommend the Fox 10 weather app. So that's the deal with the heat. Uh, if you have any questions about the heat, remember Facebook chat if you want to. Uh, engage with that. We've been doing multiple posts as well about the heat advisories and such. Also, if you have the Fox 10 weather app, you've been getting those notifications about the heat advisories as well. So switching gears now, we just talked all about the heat. Long story short, it's not going anywhere. You just got to make sure that you're keeping yourself safe, keeping the people around you safe and staying cool. Now let's switch gears to our friendly tropics where we're getting busy. Uh, it is that time of year where things start to happen and uh, we have one disturbance that we're dealing with right now in the Atlantic and actually nearing the Caribbean, just north of some of the Caribbean islands right now. Um, let me see if I can get this thing to push here. It looks like my computer decides to go a little slower. Give me one second. There we go. All right, so advancing this forward. Development chances with an area that is out in the Atlantic. Medium chance of development here over the next seven days. Notice the near term. Notice the near term, the development chances are not that high. The environment is not there for this thing to develop in the near term. So as it moves north of Hispaniola, that's Haiti and Dominican Republic, as it moves north of Puerto Rico, it does not have the environment around it to develop. However, as it approaches the Bahamas, gets into the Bahamas and approaches Florida, the environment becomes more favorable for development. So that's something that we will watch. We do have time to watch this thing. Please understand that we do have time. This will be a somewhat slower moving system, especially as it approaches the Bahamas. Might have impacts for heavier rainfall for Florida, something we'll be watching there. But you see a very broad development area as indicated by the National Hurricane Center, indicating a little bit of uncertainty in position and track. Let's get some things out of the way. Understand that right now we do not have a defined center with this tropical wave. So the models don't have a position to latch on to to extrapolate position from on the, in the future. 
Because we don't have that position, you have that widespread in models. I have some models that are going deep into the Gulf of Mexico, some that are turning out to the Atlantic. It's extremely wide swath right now. We've seen some trends, we've seen some indications, but right now a little too early. Let's wait a little bit, let's give it a day or two, let this thing consolidate, then we might get a better idea of what's going on. All that being said, we can still speculate a little bit and try to get some idea of what's going on. Here's some of the things that we do know. Development not expected until late week. Conditions become more favorable, as I mentioned, as it nears Florida. Right now, or earlier, it was fighting with dry air. Now it's gotten rid of some of that dry air. It's going to be consolidating over the next few days before it reaches the Bahamas, where it can consolidate more. Most models have it as a weaker system as it approaches Florida, if anything at all. So weaker system is the thinking right now. There is an uncertainty with a wide range of track possibilities as well. It depends on where that center consolidates, as I mentioned earlier. So approximate position on Thursday near Hispaniola there. Uh, it could be at the top of that circle. It could be at the bottom of that circle. There is a wide range, all depending on where does the center consolidate. It may not even be consolidated by then. So just keep that in mind. We're just going to have to keep an eye on the forecast. Possible track into Gulf. Uh, the latest run of the European forecast models have shifted to the western coast of Florida. That's just one model run, but it's something to note. Again, there's no center of circulation that this thing is latched onto. So there are too many questions at this time. We have plenty, plenty of time to watch this thing. Possible turn to the east coast that is also on the table. Uh, and that is still on the table and will stay on the table until it's not. Uh, so something we'll be watching there. Long story short, across the southeastern United States, especially those in the Florida Panhandle, or excuse me, the Florida Peninsula, the Florida Peninsula, places like South Florida, your Miamis, they'll be keeping a very close eye on the system. And regardless of development, we'll probably see some heavier rain, especially this weekend. Give you a little idea of timing here. So Thursday, approximate position. Friday, we're getting into the Bahamas here, deeper into the Bahamas. And then by the weekend, we're approaching South Florida or in South Florida. So this is going to be a slow moving system, especially as it is near Florida. We'll have time to watch this thing. The steering currents are generally a little bit lighter. Speaking of those steering currents, let's give you a look with the GFS forecast model of these steering currents. Two areas of high pressure around the system right now. Uh, this is Friday, so you can see our Friday position somewhere around here. Notice there's nothing consolidated on the GFS forecast model at that point. It is very possible. Does something consolidate all the way down here near Jamaica? Does something consolidate up here near the Bahamas? Once again, there's uncertainty there. But well, here's what we do see. Two areas of high pressure with a split in the middle. That split is what is opening up that lane that some models have seen for a northward turn on the east coast of Florida. That is still on the cards. However, this run, the GFS, much more to the south, therefore it sneaks it into the Gulf of Mexico where there is generally weak steering flow. Regardless of development, we know that the steering flow around Florida will be somewhat weak. If it takes that eastern path, it might pick up on a trough and try to shoot out a little bit faster. Otherwise, it's slower. So this is Sunday, and we have some kind of low position in this general area here. So that's a wide area that it could be in. Notice it is extremely weak, but some kind of low pressure system there. That's why I mentioned this weekend Florida, uh, especially around Miami and South Florida, possibly increased rain chances, possibly some flooding rain. So weak steering flow there. Keep that in mind as we look at this in the future. So in review, here's where it is right now. It is uh, near the greater, or excuse me, lesser Antilles, approaching the greater Antilles near Puerto Rico, U.S. Virgin Islands slowly, slowly getting its act together. This is very far out still. By this weekend, it'll be near Florida and we'll have some indication of where it will be going. We'll also have some indication of where the center of circulation is, maybe, if it develops by then. And by then, we'll be able to get a little bit more on future track, possibly into the Gulf of Mexico or possibly out to sea. Especially by the end of this week as well, we'll have some ideas. So we want you to check back with us. And of course, we'll be doing our best to keep you updated on that. So that's our thinking right now with this area of disturbed weather that is uh, north of the Caribbean now, or at least nearing the, near the Caribbean. We'll be tracking off towards the Bahamas by the end of this week and into this weekend. Good news for us locally. 
no tropical impacts expected over the next few days. We're just going to be dealing with our typical summertime forecast. Speaking of that typical summertime forecast, here it is. 40% chance of rain through Friday. I bump it to 50 on Saturday. That's just because we get a little bit more moisture in here. Then on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, we'll be watching the tropics, of course. But for now, I just have scattered showers and thunderstorms around, not expecting any issues. Temperatures will still be very hot. Temperatures in the middle 90s. Heat index values into the triple digits. Do not be surprised if we have more heat advisories in the coming days, as we saw earlier, that ridge of high pressure in place. So that's the deal for us right now. We thank you for joining us as always on Next Weather. I am meteorologist Nicholas Herboso. We'll be live on Fox 10 News at 3, 4, 5 p.m. with Chief Meteorologist Jason Smith. And stay tuned for later in the week, more updates on the tropics and, of course, the heat that we are tracking. We thank you for joining us.